In the world of software development, GitHub is one of the most widely used platforms and we built it using GitHub. Let's open up the curtain a little and talk about how we approach building GitHub on GitHub. Today we're joined by Neha. Thank you so very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So one thing I don't think everybody knows is the fact that we actually build GitHub on GitHub. That's right. What we're trying to understand is whether people are actually going to resonate with the products that we're building, whether we're introducing new ways of working that people aren't familiar with, and honestly, whether it's good. Especially in the advent of Copilot, things are moving so quickly. There's constantly new pieces of technology all the time. Our developers are our first line where we can kind of understand, are they overwhelmed? Are they excited? Are they energized? And where is that momentum? So it's a great testing bed. I manage them, right? <laughs> so uh, I know I get to hear from them all the time. And I think it's a huge advantage for us because we have people who are incredibly passionate and incredibly opinionated so that when it comes to trying to build something and making sure that we're getting the right thing outside, we know that people like it internally first. And this is how Merge Queue came about, if I remember correctly. That's right. So Merge Queue is the ability, um, when it comes to taking all of these different pull requests in and shipping them out to our customers, there's different ways that you want to organize those. Back in the day, we had trains, right? So we'd have these like tranches of PRs that we would ship together. And we wanted to work towards a more automated way where things could get naturally um, shipped out in a more continuous way. The concept of that queue that would go in and the rules around, okay, cool, if that doesn't, if the tests don't pass, you can dequeue that on its own, right? The logic behind that is a feature for merge queue. Okay. So, so that way I can make sure, like if I, if I have a PR here, that this isn't gonna make a change that's gonna break something else like that's right. yet to come. Okay. And like, we always tried to find different processes to do that and different companies do that, but usually it ends up being some sort of grouping. And so if something breaks in that grouping, then everyone has to get off the train, right? So we were trying to find different ways to do that. And every company is trying to find those innovations. But the advantage at GitHub is when we realized, hey, okay, we want to move to a better system internally, we then could ask ourselves a question, should everyone benefit from this, right? And so Merge Queue came about just as a local optimization because we knew that we wanted to be able to ship faster and we wanted to have a more higher likelihood that the work that you're doing can actually go out when you want it to go out. And then we got to do that for everyone else as well. So. You know, one of my, um, my, my favorite phrases that I've heard in my career is that we're not launching rockets here. And what we're doing is oftentimes very similar to what other people are doing. So what I'm hearing is, is like, hey, we had developers that kept saying, this is a problem. We need to fix this. We yes. fix it for ourselves. And then we went, hang on a minute. Somebody else might really like this. And that then became... That then became yeah, a and we get those ideas all the time, right? We'll do hackathons internally, and sometimes the hackathons will be for customer-facing problems. Sometimes it's like genuinely just improve your local developer experience. And it always behooves the question, can someone else benefit from this? Mm -hmm. um, and I think another example, a few years ago, we were trying to understand, okay, what can we do to help the open source community? And maintainers get very overwhelmed with bug requests because they don't have all the information that they need. And so we really sat down and we talked to a bunch of those maintainers and we realized that they wanted a little bit more stringent forms in order to say, okay, these are genuinely required fields that we need. The first version of that came out of a hackathon, right? Oh. And so we were playing around with the different fields to see what we liked, and we got to vote internally and say, okay, cool, we think we should take this feature and we should build it to a point where it can go out to customers. Um, and that's just the funnest part ever, right? Ideas can come from anywhere. If we can get traction and if we can build it out in the right way, then we can make sure that everyone benefits from it as well. And in turn, and this is actually something I only learned about uh, recently, and I've, I've been at GitHub for, for about three years now, and you know, always, always kind of learning new things, is this little thing called Computer Club. Yeah. And I'm assuming, <laughs> to go with the bad joke, like the first rule isn't don't talk about Computer Club. So what is, what is Computer Club? So Computer Club is this uh, way for us to gather a bunch of uh, the folks who really like to try brand new things. We started with Code Spaces. So we created Code Spaces Computer Club. We wanted to make sure that we were incorporating feedback internally and addressing those very aggressively. So it was a grouping of people who were like, I'm going to try the latest and greatest. I'm going to give feedback. In return, we're going to listen to that feedback and prioritize the feedback that we get from that channel mm -hmm. in a prioritized backlog and make sure that we address those bugs. So it was this creed around GitHub 
engineers should love these features before we force anyone else to take a look at them as well. <laughs> and we should take their feedback incredibly seriously. So there's a Slack channel, there's a repo, and we're doing this with Copilot as well. So for our Copilot features, anyone who's willing to try something new, we can feature flag you into everything, the latest and greatest, and it's a, just a more free flow information back and forth on people who love technology and people who love to make sure that people love technology right. and work together. And I definitely, I could also see just like the benefit of like self-identification, that if I'm gonna join a computer club, because I'm, I, I actually am in, in, in the Copilot one, obviously that's a product that I'm very passionate about. So in turn, it's something that I'm gonna be far more likely to just continue to use, that's right. but that I'm also going to be able to, to share that feedback and then hopefully in turn drive an even, an even better product. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like a lot of us grew up as nerds, right? In our <laughs> local Some of us high still schools, are. right? And so that concept of the computer club and that fat passion and that interest, right? We're trying to channel that and make sure that we turn that into something good. And those folks are the ones who like, maybe we have a bug and we discover that bug, they're going to give it another try afterwards. So we want to make sure we get those people who come in, give it another try and give us feedback as to whether it's better. Apparently GitHub has been around for 17 years now. Which That's I, right. <laughs> I saw that number the other day, which uh, uh, was was kind of like a wow moment. What do you think like the biggest lesson is that, that we've kind of picked up along the way? The open source community is what makes software run. And and um, it is filled with a group of vocal, passionate, and genuinely well-intended folks who want to provide their feedback and want to leverage and use the stuff that we have today. And we only go as far as everyone's willing to exchange, try new technology, and share things for free or leverage in certain ways. Um, the open source community is what makes GitHub run and it makes us successful. And personally, as I've gone through my journey at GitHub, I've also found something really interesting between the relationship between open source community and large enterprise companies. Mm. So they are trying to solve the same problems. They're trying to intersource. They're trying to communicate. They're trying to create their own culture. And we as GitHub have the ability to give them those tools to be able to do that and make people successful. So it's a wonderful journey to be in, and it's something that we need to continue to invest in. You mentioned organizations kind of modeling a little bit of the open source uh, software creation process right. with uh, with inner source. Given all of this, what impact do you think that that has on what GitHub is able to deliver for uh, for enterprises and really help support enterprises in their in their DevOps processes? I think there's a few interesting tie-ins. So the first one, kind of what I was saying before, is that we've learned a lot of what we need to do for software and how to make things easier off of the open source community. And I'm seeing a lot of similar things when I'm talking to customers now around them saying, OK, cool, how do I communicate better to my folks? How do I make sure that I'm connecting things better? And all of those things are similar problems. And that's like part of that inner sourcing category. So I'm seeing customers trying to solve problems that we've seen open source solve. And so we can apply those technologies back and forth. And I think the second thing that really resonates when I'm talking with customers, and I want to make sure that everyone knows, is that um, we genuinely understand how much mental load there is to learning a new feature, to learning something brand new, and to introducing that to your software engineers and to your um, teams. And we see that internally, and we experience that internally. And that's why we take so much care to our craft, why we um, test everything out internally first, um, is to make sure that any of those rough points that we see internally first we can fix before we get it out to customers. And with those lessons of transferring that out, we can make sure that our sales team, our enablement teams, our ops teams, our support teams are armed with that knowledge to make sure that everyone can be successful as well. I remember in a prior conversation that we had, you mentioning something along those lines of, you know, a lot of our developers, because we're so used to things being staff shipped and 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 our cheese moving on, on a regular basis, that if we have a situation where developers are going, hang on a minute, this doesn't feel right, this doesn't feel comfortable, right. then obviously that's not going to feel right or feel comfortable for our customers as yeah. well. Yeah, and we look at traction stats in Internally, sometimes we'll staff ship something and we won't tell anyone. And we'll see if anyone actually changes their behavior. If people don't change their behavior, um, even for some co-pilot features, we'll have like a thumbs up or thumbs down for as to whether their suggestion was helpful or not. Um, if there's too many thumbs down, it doesn't go out, mm. right? We're not going to ship it out to people. That's, that's really interesting. Thank you so very much for being here today and for sharing all of your knowledge, Neha. Thank you so much for having me. What really struck me about that conversation is how we build stuff for and by developers. That we hear our developers going, hey, I want this to exist, and we build based on exactly that. 
To continue the journey, check out the link. And thanks for joining as we go beyond the commit.